confessions. I'm trying to teach them all lessons. Yeah. Whoa. Yo, yo, welcome to this week's episode of Hardwood Confessions, your weekly hoop confessional where we speak to athletes and industry professionals alike and get a chance to speak their truth. My name is Tay, I'm your host, and we got a very special guest today. We're going to switch it up a little bit, and uh, we got my guy, um, Joseph Barquette out of Arizona. How's it going today, brother? Good, good, good. Nice and uh, warm still. I'm surprised it hasn't dropped temperature yet. Right, right. Well, Arizona, you know, it's you guys usually probably don't get days off like Texas uh, when it comes to heat. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Yeah, yeah. So, so look for those that are listening and uh, and watching. Um, Joseph is a uh, a private wealth advisor, and he runs and operates his own uh, his financial advisory firm. And so, um, he works with all demographics across when it comes to financial. Um, but he has a specialty working with uh, professional athletes as well as coaches. And so um, we got a, we got a chance uh, to meet and work together closely um, with one of my clients that I had in the past. And, uh, and so he was, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, they don't become a statistic, right? A professional athletes tend to unfortunately fall into. And so, um, yep. Oh yeah. So, He's your man when it comes to, to all the financial things and making sure athletes and, and as well as everybody else, you know, um, secures their future. Uh, so let, let, me, let me ask you, let me ask you, uh, you know, um, you know wh- where was your introduction in terms of, of, of basketball? You know, I grew up uh, in the Bay Area uh, when I was really young and I moved down to Southern California um, about middle school age. And before that, I, I played a lot of soccer. I played, always played, I was always athletic. I was um, very competitive, um, always wanted to win. Um, and child of the 80s, you get introduced to a bunch of different sports and being yeah. able to do kind of everything and anything and whatever, you know, they always had new sports coming out for the most part. But for the most, most of the time I played soccer from the age of three uh, and until I was actually a sophomore in high school. Um, but I also played baseball and I, I, I did play some basketball, but I never felt I was 100% good at basketball, soccer. I just learned to, to do it. All right. um, but it wasn't until I moved to Southern California in the, in the late 80s uh, to, uh, to be basically the, the, the valley of, of Southern California. And I, I started watching uh, the Lakers Celtics series. Oh, and, uh, and, and that was like, show, you know, Showtime with Magic Johnson. It was just, it was amazing to watch. And, um, I would try to I'd go to school and we would try to repeat the performances and everybody would pick who they were. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and it just depended on who picked who first. And um, I was never a Magic Johnson, uh, yeah. first off. Um, I right. always wanted to be because it always looked flashy, but I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but it was just that's that's kind of where the, the start of, of basketball for it, the, the passion for me and, and the competitiveness um, started to to show show itself and so that really is is where I got the first taste of basketball and I didn't really stop playing basketball I continued to play soccer but I also started to play YMCA basketball and different types of basketball organizations from that point on all right okay so you know we we all get that introduction from you know you said the the Lakers and the Celtics and and uh you know mine was you know the whole Jordan 90s era you know going through that so um you know, I love the fact that, you know, no matter what you are in your career, what you do, you know, you kind of have that same experience when it comes to sports. Um, and so, you know, you were fortunate to, to, to play young and get influence and then, you know, get a chance to, in your career, work with athletes. And so, um, and, you know, there's, there's always been that, you know, there's concerns about athletes and, and uh, unfortunately making horrible financial decisions, you know, um, yeah, and, and I'm sure you have solutions that like speak to that. Like, how, how, what's the dynamic of that situation? Yeah, I think uh, for me, one of the the biggest eye openers, um, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, is the uh, thirty for thirty uh, broke. I, I, I'm assuming with Sports Illustrated the the broke series. Uh, that was uh, that was a real taste. You know, up until that time. Uh, I think you have this illusion of professional athletes that uh, they have all this money and they spend it how they choose to spend it and it never runs out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the show always goes on. And watching, uh, watching that episode of Broke uh, really opened my eyes up to the reality that the, it's not reality. The reality is uh, most, if you know, I would say a high percentage, 70 something percent go broke. 
Wow. And it's, it's, it's huge. And I, I look at it, I, when I watched it, I looked at the, I took it in perspective. I looked at, okay, well, how could someone in my role, how can someone in my industry help professional athletes, coaches, agents, whomever they are, um, that are making these large sums of money, money at a very young age. I mean, we're talking some of them are 19 years old, 20 years yeah. old. Millionaires I, I remember when I was, yeah, I was 19, 20 years old. Right. I had a buck. I had two bucks. I had five bucks. I was going to spend, you right. know, candy, right. video games, whatever it was, I'm spending it. And so the mindset doesn't change, right? right. The education isn't there uh, at a young age. Um, and the ability to control those impulses is not there at a young age. And especially for boys or men, um, and I'll say most of these, you know, so-called 19 year olds aren't men yet, they're still boys. Yeah. Um, and so that causes a lot of those impulses to send you down the wrong, you know, the wrong track and you end up, you know, wasting a lot of time, wasting a lot of money. And it isn't until you get to the end of your career, um, most of the time that you start to realize, shoot, I should have, you know, I basically should have saved this money. I shouldn't have right. done any of the stuff that I've been doing right. um, because now I don't have any of it left. Right. So that, that, that introduction through 30 for 30 really helped, helped me open my eyes to see that I, as a, a advisor, as a financial planner, could step into these um, person's lives and hopefully not be the, the yes man that they all have, yeah. that they've all built themselves on, right. uh, being surrounded by. Uh -huh. I come off as the no man. And, uh, and I don't say that because I want to say it. I say it because it needs to be said. Right. And that that's what hopefully I've been trying to do for, for most of the clients that I work with professional right. athlete clients I work with. Yeah. And, that, and that's amazing to speak to. And, and, uh, for those also that are listening to, um, we got a chance to work together. Uh, you came out to, to Houston and, uh, yeah. I had you as one of my, one of my guest speakers, um, to speak. And so one of the things that you, you didn't say it in this, um, in, in that in that setting, uh, but I'll never forget um, in terms of athletes and speaking to the dynamic of you know like mm -hmm. regular individuals that aren't professional athletes. They got you know until what you're eligible what at 14 or 15 to work, all the way up to 65 to secure you know you know the last you know 10 maybe 15 years of your life. Where an athlete 30 years now, 30 years yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, 30, if you yeah. think about life expectancies, it's not going down. It's only going up with more medical care, the, the technology and uh, advancements you're getting, your ages are starting to go up. So when you have a younger person that's retiring at say 30 years old, right. they have, they have 65 years right, right. to live off of that money uh, that they, they needed to build up yeah. or they need to find another career. Right. So, and so yeah, yeah it's athletes, a scary fact. It is, yeah. And so with athletes having a, a very small span of working experience it, to save, right? So it's like the opposite, right? So you have that 100%. small window to, you know, get ready for a large window of retirement. That's and, right. Uh, that's I right. You speaking of that, and, and that's always stuck with me when I've had conversation with athletes and when they ask just some simple questions in terms of, you know, money and what, you know, what they should do, or if somebody's speaking to it, I'm like, well, yeah, they got to be very mindful because first off, nobody's promised to play the next game, right? Injury or whatever. But, That's right. And, and who's, nobody's promised that you're going to play that next year outside of your contract if it expires. And so you've got to be mindful. And, you know, that small window is very important what you do. Yeah. And I, and I found that over um, my time or experience working with professional athletes, um, it, it seems to be that – you know, education, financial literacy, it's not taught in uh, grade school. It's not taught in high school. It's not even taught in college. That is a mandatory class for you to graduate. Right. So how, how would you expect someone, like I said, that's 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, given 200,000, 400,000, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, million dollars to figure out that, oh, that's right. I need to save this money because right. I need to think ahead, right? How many times has an 18 year old ever thought ahead or a 19 year old thought ahead 30 years? No. Okay. I, I remember not even thinking ahead the same day. I'm like, yeah. I don't remember what I was going to do. So <laughs> it's, it's almost like you have to reprogram or as soon as you get them, hopefully like train that person at that point in time to start thinking about their future um, rather than the here and now. And it's difficult because you're basically telling that person, look, you have all this money, but you can't spend it. Right. You, you really can't. And I've ran into several scenarios where I've said the same thing over and over that wasn't listened to, wasn't heeded the warning. 
And then I, let's say it didn't happen that day. It didn't happen that month, but a year later situation arises where uh, it's over yeah. and that's it. And you didn't save that money and now you're stuck. And it's a horrible feeling from an advisory standpoint because I feel like I failed, but it's going to be even a worse feeling for the actual professional athlete that has to right. deal with it. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I, and I, and I was going to save this to the end, but I, but I think it's appropriate now to, 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 to speak to this. So we, there was just the NBA draft a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah. Our, yeah. So first round, of, of players that get drafted are all guaranteed contracts. So there is literally 30 millionaires um, that were instantaneous. Uh, instantaneous that were called out a couple of days ago. What, mm -hmm. what, what type of uh, just a basic level? What, I mean, what, what would be your words of advice to them uh, going in, you know? Um, and I mean, and I, yeah. and I'm sure that's a long conversation for you when you get with your clients. <laughs> so if you, yeah. that is, that is a long comment. And, and yeah. what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll probably rather it all, I'll answer it by saying, look, most of the time, um, when you're when you're given that much money, hopefully you've done the due diligence. Hopefully your your agent, your family, um, whomever it is that that are trustworthy and loyal to you, um, and not not themselves in their own pocketbook, but really that want your best interest at heart. Hopefully they're um, going to put together a team of people with and it's 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 a pretty easy team to look at it's like the cpa right. um financial advisory um you know so tax finances um your agent of course um and then also i would almost say uh, an estate planning or, or some sort of legal as well and most of the time lawyers are dealing with the contracts anyways yeah. but it's i think it's always good to separate out the group yeah. not have one do three or four different things, you know, um, yeah. that, that definitely allows you to have what, what I would say would be a brain trust of, of complimenting hopefully and, and maybe not complimenting. Maybe it's something that, look, I don't feel the same as the CPA. I feel like if you do this, then the, this, this will happen longer term, short term. Yes, it may affect you, but longer term, it will help you. So right. I think having the ability to have that line of communication with all those experts or specialists, um, will help to uh, allow you to reach those goals. And I, and I also believe that putting a goal out there and saying, instead of just taking it day by day, it should be, look, I'm going to, um, I'm going to save all of this money and I'm only going to live off of um, my, um, I'm trying to, I forgot the word, I apologize. Um, mm -hmm. Basically any commercial money, any um, advertisements, yeah, anything like that. Endorsements, yeah. Yeah. So endorsements. Thank you. So any of endorsement money um, will be lived off. Of, and, and there's been multitudes of players that you've read about. Uh, right. Was it Gronk? Gronk's one of them, right? Gronk's one of them. Where, Shaq is probably the biggest. Shaq yeah. The biggest. Shaq. Yep. And so what that allowed them to do is say, look, I'm going to pocket this full amount of money. It's right. going to go to all investments. It's not going to be invested in um, a fly by night nightclub or restaurant or, right. or any type of business that I can't control or oversee. First off, most professional athletes aren't business owners uh, when they're playing basketball and they right. shouldn't be, yeah. they should be focusing on playing basketball right. or whatever their sport is. So I think a lot of that can be lined up that they can learn in the future um, to basically, um, you know, do away with until that time comes when they're no longer playing basketball and their focus is, is, is not on basketball. So that part of it is get a team set up just like you would, be on your team, get a good team of coaches um, that can act on your behalf in your, in your, in, but, but don't, one of the bigger thing is don't ever just step away from it. Right. Right. Okay. Be a part of it, yeah. educate yourself and make sure they're all teachers, make sure they're all educating you to, you know, basically um, become the best person you can be by, by learning um, about what each role is. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. So, yeah. So you can, so, so for the athletes, you can still have your entourage, just have, have the right people <laughs> as your entourage, uh, as opposed to your yeah, friends they, and, and family that are probably just bleed money out of you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the entourage is a, is a, I hate to say it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bad word to me. Um, and I don't mean that in a, in a, I don't know how to say it. Uh, family, best friends, friends, strangers yeah. when when you make that type of money when you make lottery money okay overnight 
you're in you're instantly recognized you're now like the go-to person for hey can i borrow this hey can i get a loan for this hey i have this business for this mm -hmm. you have to learn and i tell this to i try to tell to all of my professional athlete clients yeah. the word no the word is no yep and it's yep. not forever no it's just no until i get a better understanding of what you're asking of me right and so that the biggest part for them is understand what the ask is yeah. evaluate that take that to your team of coaches your 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 team of specialists say look i have this opportunity here's what it is um speak to them about it and then they'll get back to me and, and i'll figure it out right but it, it can't be where i'm giving money to this person my my aunt my uncle my cousin my brother my sister um you are amazed just like any normal person that that goes out and buys a, a starbucks latte every week right all right for four to five dollars, figures out at the end of the month they've spent a lot of money on Starbucks lattes that they could have saved uh, right. by making their own coffee. Right. And it, it falls in the same thing. Two hundred dollars is nothing to a person that has millions of dollars. But over two thousand dollars is nothing to a person that has million dollars. And it, it depends on the person, though. It does. But when you put in the scope of things, it doesn't. So most people that are asking for these things think that it's not that big of a deal. But you add two thousand times two thousand times two thousand, it adds up. Yeah. real quick to a bigger number for sure and then there's a, there's a whole element uh to that called survivor's remorse right so <laughs> yes you feel bad so there, there's there's that element to it as well and so yeah it's tough and but i'm but i'm glad you know joe that there's there's guys at you that actually can speak to that you know and and you've been you got you've been fortunate enough to work with nba guys and, and coaches to where you can you know i'm sure you've had that conversation um so um here at harvard confessions joe we have a segment called hooper's confessional um, mm -hmm. I'm ask a series of questions. You get to speak your truth. Uh, and this segment is uh, sponsored by Black Water, uh, and it has the uh, power of a sports drink while maintaining its purity of water. Uh, and if you click on the link in the description below, uh, you can get a discount on your first order. Uh, so with all that being said, Joe, and everything we talked about from childhood, you know, your, your Celtics Laker introduction to where you're at career today, what, what does the basketball or what, or what does it continue to mean to you as it pertains to your career? I think for me, it's, it's, it's a goal uh, for like a professional athlete, like their goal to win a championship, right? Or to, to reach the highest pinnacle that they can. Yeah. For me, it, it's, it's the goal to say, look, uh, my clients that are with me will not be on 30 for 30 broke. Yeah. They, they will not be that. Yeah. As long as they listen, as yeah. long as I can help educate them. The biggest key, the takeaway is, can I do a good enough job um, to be their advisor, to gain their trust, um, to allow them to reach their goals and not end up, you know, blowing themselves up or becoming broke. Or, and, and for me, that, I think that's my goal. That, that's, that's what I feel this type of relationship with professional athletes and, and my role as a financial, you know, professional financial planner is, is what I take to heart. That's what kind of drives me to continue down the path. It's not an easy path. Right. Uh, I will tell you this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, professional athletes, uh, they, everybody's a good person, but um, they also have issues, right. you know, when it comes to certain things. Um, and uh, trust is one of them. Sure. Um, uh, you know, the, there's a, there's a, <laughs> a bunch. Yeah. And um, so just making sure that I, I keep, keep, pushing them in the right direction um, or maybe even pulling them um, and allowing them to still voice how they feel about things still to grow and learn, but to keep uh, just forcing them to go the route that I know is going to work out best for them in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, with that being said, is a lot, a lot, you brought up trust and that's, and that's a big thing. And I've, I've worked yeah. with, you know, professional as well. And, and that's, that's a huge component, you know, of it because of the fact that, like you mentioned, they've got so many things pulling them each and, you know, and so it becomes a level of trust because you just don't know who really has your, your best interest at heart. So um, let me ask you, let me ask you another question. Is, is there a, a false reality um, that you find yourself dealing with where, uh, maybe it's an expectation that when you have that meeting with that athlete, there's an expectation, you know, that uh, they may have. Yes. Yes, for sure. For sure. Professional athletes uh, for the most, yeah. For, what I found with professional athletes is they have this drive in them and 
it's a drive that's instilled since they were young. So it's, it's, it's nothing that just all of a sudden magically happened. They've been, been right. instilled in since they were, they were very young. And that drive uh, offers two things. It offers high amount of performance. That's mm -hmm. why they're at the level that they're, they're at. Right. right. Okay? But, but the issue with that is when they're not on the court, mm -hmm. when they're off the court, when they're, they're not playing, then they got to let that outlet out somewhere. And, gotcha. and so that part of it is the, the trust factor. It's the controlling factor to say, look, you know, I trust you to follow, follow what I'm, I'm teaching, what I'm helping you to understand. But they also have to be able to trust in themselves that they can't get um, trapped in being wanting to just go, go, go. Like, oh, that's, that's the next hottest thing. I want to do Bitcoin. I want to do marijuana stock. I want to do all these things, this nightclub, this restaurant, this business. Um, they just, it's, it's that go attitude. It's that win at any cost attitude. And, and they yeah. think that they can do all that yeah. when not to say they can't at some point in life, but like I said earlier, they can't until they put hundred percent focus into something. Yeah. I've found that a lot of professional athletes, when they can't focus 100% on one thing at a time mm -hmm. that they, it just, they lose focus on it and it goes to the wayside or it, it, bur it crashes and burns. Yeah. And it could be businesses, could be different investment types of deals, anything like that. I'm, I, I've just come to find just over the time that I've, I've worked with, you know, professional athletes, they need to be able to focus on one thing, 100%. Yeah. And if they don't, it's trouble. It's now, real trouble. Now, do you, do you think that's a, do you think that goes to like a personality trait maybe, or is it just hundred percent? hundred percent. Because I'm, no, no, no. I'm sure there's, there's, there's athletes that you do you have dealt with that, that got it right. And you're like, Oh man, yes. great. You know, what, what, what does that look like? Well, it's, it's a, it's a, it's like a black and white, you know, it's, 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 there's no, there's no real gray area that I found. No, I don't think there's any gray area I found yet. I found some that, you know, are willing to listen that spend way more than they make. Um, wh whether it was instilled by their parents, whether it was just um, something that happened to them early on in life. And they just yeah. are so fearful of losing out on that money at a later time in life. Whereas the other side that, you think get it they just continuously make the same mistakes and end up hurting themselves and it's not it, it, and even though it's just a short-term hit and oh i can make it up uh, my next contract or something like that right right it, it, it builds over time so you don't even recognize it until later on in life because you're losing compound interest right any of that money that you're losing could have been building on it for yourself for later on yeah. in life so there is i haven't found any gray I really, it's just black or white. Black and and white. It, it's, yeah, it's very strange. Uh, both ends of the spectrum. Right, um, right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, with that being said, um, I was going to ask you, but if there was any memorable moment that you might've had in your career dealing with athletes, but um, maybe, maybe that is one <laughs> where you're like, like, man, this, he gets it, you know, and that's yeah. that, you know, that is it. I mean, honestly, it's when, um, or, or actually there are a couple, I mean, that is, that is for sure. One of them. Um, and I think it's also when, when you have an athlete that um, just basically has a whole bunch of different issues that have never been resolved. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like a, a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, that the picture of the puzzle, it's yeah. there. It's just right. all these pieces are spread all over the place. And then you're like, wait, where'd this one piece go? I have to right. find that piece. So it's almost like, that part of it to figure out the puzzle. And once you find that extra one piece and you finally finish it, you're like, wow, that look at it. All this is now going to work out. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. All these things are going to be good for this person um, for the rest of their lives. And I think that's, I've had that a couple times now where I've, I've worked, you know, the, the, the client, the professional athlete worked with me and trusted in me to, fulfill that that puzzle for him right and, right. and it's worked out and just not for him but for his family as well because a lot of times and you know it's just all oh, i do that the the player is not just himself mm -hmm. he's bringing on right. his his possible wife his um possible children and the rest of his family sometimes yeah um it's a it's a could be a generational issue uh it could be a demographic uh issue right. um you know and when you have that type of situation you, you may not just be planning for that one person, that one professional athlete, you may be planning for a, a multitude of different people. Right. Um, so. Yeah. And it, it's, I think it's challenging for athletes because there's, there's one specific athlete and I'm not bringing him up because, you know, he's one of my guys I, uh, I look up to, you know, 
off the court, but you got somebody like LeBron James who's actively playing. He's in his 17th year, going into his 18th, but he's done the business. And, and you know, obviously he's a, he's a very, very rare situation. Yes. You know, and so, and I think, and I think people look at that because he, you know, he's gotten the media and agency and, and, you know, he's just announced that he's, you know, collab with start a new tequila company. And so he's, he's, he's owns part of Arsenal, you know, out there in the Premier League and soccer. And, and he's, athletes are looking at him like, wow, okay, this, is that the blueprint? Or do, can I do the same thing? And so, and I think that kind of brings back to all over the place because they may be trying to emulate that or, yeah. Uh, to a degree what, what what the difference is you know we know the major difference it's right. lebron james yeah. okay it's 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 michael jordan it's magic johnson when you don't sit in that company um the likelihood of um the ability to make mistakes and still be make financial mistakes and still be perfectly fine yeah is yeah. is <laughs> it's a lot right. less right and so what what I've come to find in the industry, especially with professional athletes that are maybe six men, um, you know, the back, you know, they're, they're the ones that are at the end of the bench. Yeah. They're the ones that are in the G League. They're the ones that are playing overseas. Um, you can still make money. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You still make money and you can still save a lot of money. But the problem is, is you're you're not guaranteed the, the amounts of money that a person like LeBron James or these all-stars are committed to. Right. Uh, and so what you have to do is you have to be extra careful mm -hmm. with the money that you do make with your body, with the time that you have in the league, yeah. um, because you just don't know how long that's going to last. And you don't know, cause you're not, you're not getting endorsement money, like you know, the sizable. Yeah. So you can't live off your endorsements. So you have to just be careful on how you manage those assets. And yeah. when you try to compare yourself to a LeBron James, or you try to live a lifestyle like yeah. a Kevin Durant, or James Harden, or whoever it is that you're looking right. up to, that's the fast. That's the fast way to get on that broke episode is yeah, to yeah. try to copy or emulate that because it's not reality. It's reality for one percent of the league. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are, are, are you're making good money, but it's yeah. not that money. And right. so when you when you take a you know step back and you really evaluate it, um, you you should start to realize that man, I, I have to be more careful. The problem is no one ever tells you that there's yeah. no, I mean, unless you have an advisor like myself or you have a team advisor that you have to be able to listen to them and, yeah. and, and they have to be able to show you the proof. And that's what I try to do with my athletes is I try to sit down, look at the financial plan, look at their assets and break the assets down to show them here's yeah. your cash flow. You know, here's how much this will make for you at this point in time. Um, here's, you can't touch this until, you know, this age and et cetera, et cetera. So that they come to realize and understand, I, I have to be more careful. I can't yeah. take these risks on. I have right. to make sure that I'm always working out to the best of my abilities, keeping, you know, taking care of my body, um, and, and not flying off and partying in LA or flying right. off and partying in Miami. Um, because that just, it just doesn't work out well for those, right, those right. types of players. So sounds, and there's more players. There's more of those types of players than there are the other ones. Right. right. So it sounds like if, if you, if you are going to be spending money and being frivolous about it, you invest in yourself, right? <laughs> Whether that's it's, exactly right. Yes, sir. And all that stay in the best possible shape, you know, cause yep. your body's your business and that's, what's going to secure your, your future. So, and LeBron James knows that he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to keep playing. He does it because he's a competitor, right? He does it because he can still do it better than pretty much everybody else in the league. And he right. knows it. Yeah. And I bet you, I guarantee you when something happens to him to where he doesn't feel that competitive edge, like he can't best this, he'll be done. Yeah. He will retire immediately. Right. For sure. All right. Before we end this segment, um, I always got to ask everybody, is there, did you have, or to this day, do you have like a superstition or uh, some, some have like a pregame ritual and, uh, or if you don't, I'm ask you when you when you put your socks and shoes on. Are you left to right first? Or are you right to left? I, I I'm left to right first. I'm left handed, oh, so okay. that probably yeah, leans yeah. into that a little bit. Um, as far as superstitions go, uh, I don't really I don't really have one. Um, I didn't wear my jersey the same jersey without washing it for you know the whole yeah. season or anything like that. Nothing right. crazy like that. Um, I maybe done one of the basketball dribbling things at the free throw line. You know, okay. bounce it to. I, I think I had a little routine. It's been a long time since I've shot a free throw, but you know, it was like two bounces, you know, and then um, I'd hesitate, take a deep breath and shoot or yeah. something like that. But right. I think for the, for, for me, 
I, I really just, I always believed in myself uh, that no matter what it was, as long as I worked hard and I was forthright and yeah. that I could do whatever I, I, right. I could do. So nice, nice. Okay. Well, Perfect. I appreciate that. And so that'll, that'll conclude that, that segment. And so um, we'll transition. So you have your Ameriprise Financial or Barquette and Associates, and I may be missing a name and I do apologize. Um, and so, you know, with you being a private wealth advisor and stuff like that, what, what, what is next uh, for you? Is it continued, you know, to work with athletes and as well as, you know, all your, your, you know, all your, um, your clients, you know, uh, yeah. Board? Yeah. I, I have clients across the board, whether it's, it's 18 year old, college students, uh, all the way up to 90, I think our oldest clients, 95, um, retirees, business owners, uh, professional athletes, agents, coaches, uh, you know, I have uh, you know, the, the, the gamut of that. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm only 47. So it's not like, uh, it's not like I'm retiring anytime soon. And the thing yeah. is, even if I could retire, um, I probably wouldn't. I just, I, I this coronavirus, <laughs> it made me see that right. I don't like spending every single day at home. Right. I'd have to find something to do. So why not do something I love uh, mm-hmm. and, and help people and get paid for it as well. Right. Um, but, but continue to do it. And in, in, in our industry, if you're, if you're physically able to do it, then you can do it for a very long time. Right. Maybe you shouldn't be depending on certain advisors, but um, you know, I think for me, it would just be continue to, to work and, and operate as is and help as many people as I can help. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I'm sure, uh, you know, the educational piece, the, the financial literacy, all that goes into, you know, what you're going to be doing to kind of help with all of that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put your social media down there for those that are watching and listening um, that may have some financial advice, you know, just because you're not an athlete. I mean, you can't reach out to this, to this man. And uh, you know, he, he, he definitely built help you out. And as you can see, you know, um, He's got a great, great personality. He's a great guy. And he'll be definitely on to speak with you. So I'll go ahead and put that down there unless you want to say what it is right now, or I can just, yeah, put- just if you, yeah, you can put it down. You can go to my website, www.raybenbarcat.com and you can put that down on there. So spell it out. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to touch on one point that you, you stated was the financial literacy. I think that's the key to not just professional athletes. I think that's the key to our entire country. Sure. I think having that financial education literacy built into our education um, from, I'll just say from high school all I the agree. way to, you know, through college in order for you to graduate high school, in order for you to graduate college, you know, you have to take um, some financial classes and, and it should just be plain old one of finance 101. What yeah. is a checkbook? How to right. balance a check? What's a credit card? How to get credit? What's a mortgage? Yeah. These are such simple things that to some people that other right. people it's like Latin. And mm-hmm. so having that ability to be taught at a younger level where people will continue to take it in and then be able to use it for the rest of our lives right. is going to take, you know, make our country better, I for think. Sure. For sure. So I just want to add that in there. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, and I'm glad you touched on that because that is, that is important. And, and of course, you being who you are in your position, I, I think that's important for you to express that, um, you know. And so, look, before we conclude this episode, um, I do have to ask, um, you know, if we were to retire your jersey today, um, mm-hmm. What would that number be for one? Uh, two, uh, was there a nickname, maybe self-proclaimed or a name that was given to you or maybe a mantra that, uh, that you had that you would put on the back of your jersey? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, I would probably, I, you know, my, my, I think that just my number, I think my number would just be 44. That was my number in high school. Okay. I don't know really why I picked that number. I just like the, the two fours next to each other. I can't really give right. you any more explanation than that. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think for my mantra is to, is to, um, I think my mantra is just, you know, to keep, to keep learning. Don't, don't stop learning. Yeah. Um, keep learning. I, I think people, the, the fools are people that always think they know everything. Yeah. And, and you don't. There's always going to be someone that knows something more than you, right. unless you're like Albert Einstein or something like that. But there's always going to be a person that knows more than you. And you should educate yourself to always help yourself. So the mantra is always help yourself. Try to try to always be learning. Perfect. Perfect. Well, couldn't have said any better. I, I appreciate you coming on, Joe. It's always a pleasure catching up with you and spending a little time. Um, so this is going to conclude this week's episode of Hardwood Confession. Uh, and if you are watching on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and now iHeartRadio, make sure you subscribe, 
like, and hit the notification bell. And to get notified on next week's episode, my name is Tay. Again, I'm your host, and we're out. Man, I keep them all guessing. Game five, and I'm shooting like seven. Uh, and I'm full court pressing. That's a hard work confession. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six.